But one thing I didn't have to deal with that everyone is dealing with now as a teenager is a worldwide pandemic. It is Christine XP. Welcome to the Brain XP community, and this is the Spotlight series. In today's episode, I sat down and chatted with Angela Sullivan, the Director of Special Projects for Recovery International. Angela joined Recovery International to focus on the development of Power Your Mind, which she will tell you about in this episode. So let's get right on into it. Can you tell us about yourself and why you decided to enter the workforce of mental health? So, um, I have a really long history working with nonprofits. I've always been that person who has been drawn to organizations that has a cause. I wanna help people or I wanna help animals. Uh, my background really is in informal education. And over the years I've worked to develop, you know, all sorts of innovative programs um, all the way from, and, and develop curriculum and training for kids, toddlers, all the way through retired adults. So I've taught a wide, wide variety of, of people over the years. Um, I also have two young teens. I'm married. I live just outside of Chicago. Um, my kids are 14 and 13. And it's, you know, it's really been interesting to see ways that they've been resilient during this pandemic and ways they've had to try to adapt to a new school day and socializing with friends from a distance. Um, and honestly, sometimes they struggle with uh, symptoms of anxiety because of what's going on. Um, where my real interest came in is, is a couple of years ago when my mom was diagnosed with vascular dementia. And I know that doesn't technically qualify as a mental illness. However, aside from mem memory loss, uh, people who have vascular dementia and other kinds of dementia do have symptoms of anxiety and she sees things that aren't there and she has depression from the loss of loved ones over the years. So her situation really got me interested in mental health overall. Mm -hmm. um, and I think then compounded with the fact that I have two teenagers and there's a lot of scary statistics right now with teen suicide and um, kids needing to go to the emergency room for mental health issues. It, it really drew me in. Um, just a few months ago, I became a certified youth mental health first aider because of them. Um, not only really because of them, but because of, you know, I'm, I'm around a lot of teens now with their friends and groups that I work with. And I thought that would be important to do. Uh, so I was really lucky to land a job with Recovery International. There are so many really passionate staff and volunteers and the program is wonderful. I've been practicing recovery for about six months now, just um, to help me deal with some of the, the issues uh, the pandemic has, has brought on, some small issues and some larger issues. So let's talk more about Recovery International. What is it and what is your role at Recovery International? So I'm the director of special projects and I was brought on when they were uh, launching or, or just in the beginning stages of launching this youth program. Um, Recovery International has been around for more than 80 years. It is definitely not new. It's been helping adults achieve better mental health using this cognitive behavioral peer-led method. And uh, Dr. Abraham Lowe is a neuropsychiatrist um, he was with the Psychiatric Institute at the University of Illinois back in the 1930s. And he developed this method to um, help his patients during that time between professional treatments. And his method in practice is, and he wrote a book, Mental Health Through Will Training. Here, it always sits on the desk with me right here. Um, so he's illustrating ways to cope with kind of daily events. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. These kind of daily trivial is what we refer to them, events that can really start to trigger symptoms. And his process is uh, involves tools. And I'll talk about the tools in a little bit so you know what those are. And ways to kind of spot the use of those tools for situations um, and apply this four-step method to really understanding how to kind of put things in perspective and gain control of a situation and have an ultimately have a better outcome. Um, so these peer-led meetings are happening all over the United States. We run about 
450 meetings a week. Uh, the United States, Canada, Ireland, Puerto Rico, and then there's people from all over. I mean, everything's virtual now, so there's there's really no limit to the to the people who can get involved and in, in be a part of the program. Gotcha. So I think that's the perfect segue into the workbook that we're going to talk about today. Power your mind. First of all, I want to thank you guys so much for sending me a copy of it. And I think the NXP community would love to hear more about it. So I'll let you go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, so I'll do that. So, you know, everyone knows being a teenager can be tough. Um, I've not been a teenager for some time now, but man, those years really stick with me. I mean, everyone remembers how hard they can be. But one thing I didn't have to deal with that everyone is dealing with now as a teenager is a worldwide pandemic. So the added stress of that uh, we know is, is creating even more um, symptoms and anxiety and depression and even anger among youth because of disruptions in their, in their normal life. So Power Your Mind, Tools to Build Resilience is a new workbook uh, released by Recovery International. And the workbook uses these graphic novel panels and the stories from Dr. Lowe's book, The Mental Health Through Will Training, and illustrates these in a, in a kind of comic um, way. And we're hoping that this really, um, really is relatable. I mean, these are all relatable situations for, for teens. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see and a quick start to that. So knowing that um, there is so much going on with teens right now, we developed this to, to really um, lots of of great work with adults in uh, the recovery method. So why not use the same method and adapt it for, um, for teens and young adults to use too? So the program of course is keeping with the recovery method. It focuses on controlling anger and alleviating symptoms caused by these everyday kind of trivial situations that, that we all encounter. Um, the program structure is set. So you have the workbook, Christine, but there are seven chapters there. And uh, one chapter, and I'll go over the content in a little bit, but one chapter is recommended to work on, you know, every couple of days or, or maybe once a week. And that gives people a, a, an opportunity to practice what they've learned in the workbook um, and reflect on it and reflect on situations that, that they've had. It can be a, as you see here, a, a independent tool, or we have the opportunity to lead group workshops. And those would be facilitated with a Recovery International facilitator. Um, and then in a group setting, everyone would have the, the workbook already. Um, and we had some, you know, we add some additional activities and some, some group work to it. So here are some of the concepts um, that are in the book. We start with um, we start with really talking about the difference between angry and fearful temper. And I've got two great examples for that today that I'll show you. And then we move to, well, what's in your kind of, you know, circle of control and what's not in your circle of control? And we refer, refer to the inner and outer environment. We also have um, then kind of go into will building your will and will training and how to do that through perseverance and patience and perspective. And then we talk about hidden meaning. And sometimes there are some underlying terms that people will, will say, and you don't quite know what they mean and you get the sense of it. Um, so we dig into that a little bit and we talk about how to use humor to help overcome those. Um, this is a, a really good topic here, being group minded and making decisions for a group. And when I talk about a group, it could be your family group, could be a school group, it could be your group of friends or you know a sport that you belong to. But thinking in terms of um, acting and behaving and making decisions in that mindset versus just about yourself. And then all of these examples have these really great spotting tools, uh, which are these statements that really help put things in perspective and help calm you. And then the recovery method, the four-step recovery method is really the backbone of Recovery International. And then we go through um, how 
how to take a situation and really look at it objectively. So when I mentioned these trivial events before, uh, these are average everyday things. We all encounter them. Um, not a big deal in the larger scheme of things in life. But when we, you know, here's some examples, you know, you might be stuck in traffic um, late for a meeting. There's really nothing you can do about being late for school or the appointment or whatever it is, because it's, it's not in your circle of control. It's not in your outer environment and you just can't do anything about it, but it can really work you up. Um, probably most popular with, with people these days too, is, you know, posting something on social media. Maybe you don't get the likes or the views that you had hoped for that could work you up. Um, and one that I think is common to a lot of people in exam or test taking can be very stressful. Uh, overall, these things are distressing, I think, to individuals, but they're not dangerous. And keeping that in mind and putting that into perspective with the tools that we can give you to help calm yourself is really our goal. So we're going to meet the characters that are in the book. And these, um, all of these characters are dealing with kind of typical, you know, typical situations. It's anger, it's insecurity, there's social issues, temper, and we follow them as they apply the training that they've learned to um, help alleviate their symptoms. So each story is told through this comic panel, and this is Max. Max kind of has become our icon for the program. Um, and we're going to meet Max next and kind of talk through how this works. So here's Max, he's waiting outside a movie theater and he's waiting for a friend named Terry and she's late. Max is experiencing angry temper right now because he feels that Terry did something wrong to him. That's our definition of angry temper. And he recognizes the symptoms that he's feeling and experiencing and he's starting to get worked up, but instead of letting his temper um, get the best of him, he pauses for a moment and his conscience kicks in here and he's really thinking about the situation a little bit more objectively and deciding that, well, with his recovery training, he can apply some tools to really help calm himself. So ultimately, he decides, you know, there might be some external factors taking place here that's causing his friend Terry to be late, um, perhaps things that she can't control at all. So ultimately, Max comes up with a plan B if his friend can't arrive on time. You know, there's always another solution. No need to get so worked up over a situation where, um, where perhaps there's a different outcome. And so all of these stories weave together and here are some tools for angry temper. So these tools are sentences. They're, they're phrases that really you can see um, one of the ones he used here you know, if we can't change a situation, we can change our attitude toward it. Drop the judgment that his friend Terry is doing something wrong to him personally, and that something else is going on. So throughout the workbook, you'll see um, these little boxes of, of tools or spots, we also call them, that um, can be applied to a lot of situations. And then I'm just gonna talk about one more. This is Terry, poor Terry. She's in that car right in the middle of all the traffic and she's the one that Max is waiting for, completely stuck in traffic and there's really nothing she can do about this. So Terry is exhibiting what we call fearful temper. Terry is blaming herself. I shouldn't have taken this road. Of course, that's what made her stuck in traffic. She's blaming herself for making that decision. So fearful temper is judging yourself for being wrong or doing something wrong. So again, we're going to kind of get into Terry's mind here. And um, she realizes, well, I can't really change the situation. And yes, it's distressing, but I'm, I'm not in any danger and perhaps um, there is something else I can do. And because she, I like to say this, because she's at a standstill in the car, she can text Max uh, and tell him, well, I'm almost there. You know, we can catch a later show. So a, a plan B. So as another example, here's tools for angry temper. 
And the other thing you're seeing on this sheet is, or on this slide um, on the right side are power tool cards. And these are cards that come in a packet and these are for, for purchase as well. And they have some of the most common tools or spots that are used. And, um, you know, we're, we have them all in the book. In the book, there are 125 tools to use. I mean, virtually any situation, but the power tool cards are kind of nice too. So here is now the four-step method. And one of the things um, that the four-step method is, is doing is helping you really just put the whole situation in perspective um, objectively. So step one is describing the situation. What happened? I was waiting for a friend and she was late. That's when I started to get worked up. Uh, step two is describing the symptoms that you're experiencing. And in Max's case, he was clenching his jaw. He was thinking angry thoughts. Step three is now looking at, well, what kind of temper was I in? And what are those tools or spots that I used to calm myself in the situation? So he said, well, I was afraid she blew me off. She didn't care to show up. I was angry. She kept me waiting. I spotted, here's his tools. I should excuse, not accuse her that I shouldn't take it personally because maybe she couldn't help it. And then here's a concept we talk about a lot is endorsing. I endorsed for realizing I can control my reaction. And that's basically a pat on the back. Hey, you did a good job. You calmed yourself. You were able to apply these tools. Endorse for the effort of, of doing that and, um, and practicing. And then step four always starts with, well, what would have happened before recovery? And Max said, well, before I would have yelled at her when she got there, we would have fought. It would have been you know, a horrible evening, ruined the whole evening. But now he's got his emotions in, in, in check and he can relax and figure out a plan B. So that's really the, a couple of chapters in a nutshell, of course. Uh, we have seven chapters and you saw all the concepts there. But one of the things, of course, we have additionally is a website, poweryourmind.org. And I mentioned tools. Well, we do have the top 10 tools on there that are expanded a little bit. We also have where you can purchase the work workbook. It is on sale through Amazon. Um, those power tool cards are also for purchase on the website. And there is some information about support group meetings. If people are watching and they're 18 or over, um, they could easily join one of the support group meetings. And we do have a link to the Recovery International website from here as well. And of course, there are help uh, helplines and information. And the QR code there, you know, easy if you're watching right now, because you could just snap that and get you right to the website. And of course, if anyone has questions, um, that's how you contact me. Info at poweryourmind.org goes right to me. Um, I, you know, and I, I want, I, I always hesitate calling this a workbook because people might think like, oh no, it's school. Well, it's not school. Um, and I really want people to think about this as exercise for your brain and building resilience to these everyday little annoyances can really help us build resilience to bigger issues, um, you know, if and when they come up in your life. So I, I hope everyone enjoyed that. And I hope you find that interesting and want to learn more. Um, Christine, I know you have a workbook. And if you have any comments about that, that would be great. Yeah, definitely. And I, I want to let you guys know, I've got the workbook right here. I've gone through it. It's amazing. You guys should definitely, definitely check it out, especially if you're struggling and you need tools to build resilience, because that is the main point here is tools to build resilience. So I just want to ask you, I mean, it seems like we've got all the information. Are there any last comments that you have? Um, a couple of fun things that we have. I'm just going to stop sharing here for a moment. So one of the things that you'll find on our website, we've we've made these um, little zines, these cute little, oh, and because of my, I don't know if you can see it. So they're, uh, these guys, oh, you made one. Yay. Yeah, they, I got some with the book workbook. <laughs> they're, they're on our website and you can print that out and of course fold it and then folding and cutting instructions are, um, are on there on a video, but it's, it's basically a little bit of information on Max and Terry, you know, it's like a short course 
and um, the tools are in there. And it's a great way to start off. If you're not sure you want to purchase the workbook yet, start there and go through that and use the tools and see, because maybe you're interested in more. And there's, there's like, there's inner and outer environment. I mean, there's so much more that we cover in the workbook that can really be a great help. So I think that's, um, let's see if I have any closing notes on anything else that I wanted to, to make sure that you guys knew about. Um, our contact information is there. Of course, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Power Your Mind Tools uh, on Instagram. And um, I can't think of anything else, but you might have other questions for me, Christine. Well, actually, I think that we covered everything. I think it was a great, great slide presentation. I know that the Brain XP community, our youth and teens can really benefit from this workbook and everything you guys are doing. So I just want to thank you for joining me. Thank you. It was so great to be on your program. I'm such an admirer of, of you and your program and your songs. I'm listening to them. I put them on when I'm working. Um, Empower Your Mind uh, could use a song. So think about it and uh, let me know if you're interested in, <laughs> in taking all the ideas from the book and creating something fun. Absolutely. We'll be in touch about that. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again. Well, thank you, Christine. Bye-bye. All right, everyone, I am back. I hope you found this episode with Angela helpful. If you go to the description box, you will find Power Your Mind's contact info and website, along with Recovery International's website. So please use their resources and reach out to them. Before I go, please give this video a big thumbs up and comment below what you found helpful. Do not forget to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell so you will be notified every time a Brain XP video comes out. And also follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Brain XP Project. Thank you so much to Angela for joining me on this episode in the Spotlight series. The episode ends here. I will be signing out. Please remember, stay positive, keep smiling, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.